I'm Ann Wachowski, Assistant Secretary for the Bureau of Conflict and Stabilization Operations at the U.S. Department of State. I'm here today to talk about the Global Fragility Act of 2019 and the associated U.S. strategy to prevent conflict and promote stability. The law and the strategy give us an opportunity to elevate prevention, prevention of armed conflict and prevention of violence, to get ahead of the curve. We're working together across the U.S. government with international partners to mitigate the drivers of conflict and instability in key partner countries and in a region. We're working specifically with Haiti, Libya, Papua New Guinea, Mozambique, and five countries within coastal West Africa. We're elevating partnerships partnering not only with the countries that we've identified as a focus, but within those countries, not only at the national government level, but at the local government level, with civil society, with local communities, with the private sector, and with many others. We're taking an inclusive approach to partnerships. We've conducted consultations with hundreds of stakeholders in the course of developing the 10-year plans under the strategy, and we have every intention of continuing this inclusive approach going forward. In countries, we're working at the local and at the community level. We're focused on empowering the participation of those on the front lines of the challenges that we're seeking to address, women and youth. Those on the front lines are most likely to understand where the solutions may lie to the challenges that we're facing. We're taking a long-term approach. The plans that President Biden submitted to Congress have a 10-year time horizon. And we're also committed to adaptation and learning. We're building a monitoring, evaluation, and learning system under the strategy that will allow us to collect data. With this evidence, we're going to understand how the situation has changed on the ground, where we may want to adapt our plans and policies so that we can iterate and adapt as we go forward. Within countries, we see different types of challenges. We see different types of vulnerabilities. We see different types of resiliency. So what we're going to see in each place is going to vary significantly. Let me talk for a moment, though, about coastal West Africa, the region with which we are partnering, uh, where we're working with five countries. We have a number of objectives in the coastal West Africa region. We're looking to build social cohesion, to advance responsive governance to create stronger, more responsive, and accountable security forces in at-risk communities. We're also aligning what we're doing to the plans of governments themselves. We're acting in support of the work that is already underway there. Through these efforts, we hope to see a reduction in the ability of violent extremist organizations and other destabilizing actors to leverage the divisions within at-risk communities. the best strategy to save lives, to disrupt cycles of conflict, and to build lasting peace is to prevent conflicts before they happen. Our national security and our prosperity depend on peaceful, resilient, and stable economic and security partners. The law and the strategy give us an opportunity to apply hard lessons learned of the last 20 years. We can learn from best practices, and we can learn from our mistakes. We're gonna learn lessons within the countries where we're working today. We're gonna to apply those lessons to our efforts going forward as we iterate our plans. We can also take those lessons that we're going to be learning and apply them to other countries and regions around the world. The bipartisan support of Congress, the engagement and support of civil society, the engagement and support of institutions like USIP, has been absolutely pivotal to our success to date and will continue to be going forward. <music>